Hey everyone, I'm Olivia Radcliffe and this is an eBeam Crash Course. During the initial conversations we at eBeam have with any customer, one of the first things we like to evaluate is whether or not eBeam is actually the best technology for your project. Now today, I'm going to go over the top three sterilization methods, electron beam, gamma, and ethylene oxide. Electron beam processing, as we've learned, is a process that uses beta radiation to break the chains of DNA in bacteria, resulting in microbial death. Even processing is very reliable and flexible, which makes it a great option for customers who have just a few cases of product or who have multiple truckloads. There is no quarantine time needed, as with ethylene oxide, and the processing time is quicker than gamma with a faster dose rate, which generally means there's less degradation to your products. There are some materials that are just not compatible with radiation sterilization methods in general, which would not be a great fit for E-beam. And because electrons are physical particles with mass, they cannot penetrate as deeply as gamma. Gamma radiation is caused by high energy photons that are released from a radioactive source, usually cobalt-60. Because gamma is also a radiation sterilization method, the same standards for sterilization validation govern both E-beam and gamma. Gamma can penetrate deeper than E-beam can, making it a good choice for dense products, but can also result in more degradation than the E-beam process. Though a radioactive source is used, the products themselves do not become radioactive, so there's no need for quarantine time. Based on the gas diffusion process, ETO sterilization occurs when an ethylene oxide molecule reacts with and destroys microbial DNA. Ethylene oxide sterilization chambers are smaller than the systems used for both gamma or E-beam, which makes on-site sterilization more readily available. ETO is compatible with a broad range of polymers, resins, and pharmaceuticals, but in order for sterilization to actually occur, the products must be contained in breathable packaging that allows the gas to penetrate and access all surfaces of the product. Products are then quarantined and degassed post-sterilization. Still don't know which method is right for you? Don't worry, just give us a call. We'd be happy to evaluate your product and point you in the right direction. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.